Hey guys, Mike here. So yeah, I know another YouTuber call on the bottom. That is not what I am doing whatsoever. So please watch all this video. It's going to be longer than usual, but there's a lot of information here that you can take from the day and you can use this for every bear market going forward for the rest of your life and teach your children this because I'm going to prove to you I'm specifically targeting the NASDAQ 100. It bottoms usually between three to six months before the S&P. I'm going to show that to you and I am not talking about you know, crash is where it happens in 30 days like it did in 2020 or a three month crash like it happened in 2018. I'm talking about bear markets, okay? And we face them anywhere from every six to 10 years, somewhere in that time range. And so you can use this every single time. And I'm gonna show you in particular here exactly what is happening right now and compare it to the last two real bear markets we were in that lasted, you know, over three months. And so we're about six into this one. And I think it's, you'll see some very big similarities. But then on the other side, I'm going to show you why we probably overall in the market have not bottomed. And so you can see that as well. And so I present the data. You take it for what you want to take it for. I'm not calling a bottom in any way, shape, or form. But as far as tech, you know, I think this is a pretty compelling argument. And so let's get into it. I'll try to go nice and slow as I can with this, but just pay attention to these charts and take some notes. And so we're looking here, guys, side by side is the NASDAQ 100 versus the S&P 500. And we're looking at the dot-com bubble bear market, okay? And what you can see right there, make sure you memorize this date right here, is October 9th. That's when the NASDAQ 100 actually officially bottomed in 2002. We didn't know that at the time. You never know what a bottom is until months later, basically. And if you look at it, you can see it went on a nice run. You look at the S&P 500 there, you can see it bottom pretty much at the same time. And, but what you see in the difference of the charts here is, you can see the NASDAQ 100 goes on a nice tear right there going up and then consolidating down and sideways, making lower highs, lower lows once again. And some bad news rolled in most likely. And you can see the run up right here. You're looking around 45% in about a two month time frame, right? Then it sells back down. But look at the low right there. I mean, it tried to come down. It's still up 20%. Then we roll over to the S&P 500. What happened to the S&P 500? Well, the S&P 500 did a major rollover. It tried to go back down and test that bottom, right? It almost did, but look at that. So it goes up 22% in that same time range of two months, but then rolls all the way back over where it's only up like 2%. Okay. And again, as I've taught you guys before, what happens? Why does the S&P 500 do that? Because we go into a recession and what craters? Commodities, oil stocks, fertilizer stocks, commodity stocks. That's what the S&P 500 holds as well. The NASDAQ 100 does not. Now, fast forward. We're going up to the 08 crash and the bear market right here. The NASDAQ bottoms on November 21st. We just don't know it in 2008. We didn't know that. Okay, look at the S&P 500, same date, not bottoms, right? We can see that as clear as day. So what happens, they come over, they move in somewhat. The NASDAQ 100 does not set a new low. It just barely does not do this, but it doesn't fall anywhere near as much as the S&P, right? And you come over here, see, same time frame. NASDAQ 100 bottom, S&P 500 we thought had bottom. Nope, what happens in every recession? Oil stocks, commodity stocks all roll over at the very end. Boom, pushing it down even farther than the NASDAQ 100, which is way more volatile. See, that's when it actually bottoms. The NASDAQ 100 had already bottomed though. We just didn't know it at the time range, or time frame, excuse me. And so you can see right there, see it goes, S&P 100 goes down another 10% from where we thought it had bottomed. And obviously you see these enormous runs. Now, what's going on in 2011? See something very similar, NASDAQ 100, on around August 9th, if you look at that wick right there, it ends up bottoming. It, it tests that bottom multiple times, but it still heads up. What's the S&P 500 do though? It doesn't bottom. We thought it hit bottom on the same day on the August 9th, but it did not. It comes up, same thing, but it sets a new bottom right there on October, what is that, 5th, I believe it is. And so again, it drops another 3% during that time range of almost two months. But the NASDAQ 100 does not set a new bottom during that time range, okay? And so, and you see, obviously, they take off after after these bear markets are over, you get these major runs. That's where you make your money at, right? And so, if you compare that to current what's happening, though, a little different. See, right here, the charts look 
identical. Okay, you look at you can't even tell what the difference is in the two right now. So that's why I'm looking at okay, maybe the NASDAQ has bottom, maybe it has not. But the one thing that definitely happens is the NASDAQ 100 definitely bottomed before the SP 500, at least in the last three real bear markets I can tell about. And so, you know, anything that lasts over three months normally, that's what happens. And you can see we're on this big run up. We're still in the channel, though, right? We're still in this channel. So that does not mean this is over. And you can tell by the other charts what's happened. It usually goes back down and tries to at least retest it. And then once oil and commodity stocks really, really roll over and you get those fertilizer stocks and uh, the oil stocks to really plummet, which are still way up, by the way, on the year, that's when it usually takes the S&P 500 down to its final resting place to bottom and so the nasdaq will follow that but most time it will not set a new bottom as well and by the way if you get anything out of this please hit that like and subscribe button for me i really appreciate it think about sharing the video as always guys thank you for all your support and something else i want you to look at this is actually a private video i put out last month for the members that are not disclosed this to the public that is actually happened last month that also could go into the argument that yes, the NASDAQ 100 in particular has bottom. And understand the NASDAQ 100 is not all tech. It's about 80% tech. The, the top eight stocks, which are the Fang stocks, plus NVIDIA and some others, make up like 50% of it. But they own Pepsi, uh, they own Ross stores, I think Dollar Tree is in there too. You know, stocks like that, a few here and there, they just don't hold a lot of weight in the NASDAQ 100 index. But I put this video out right here on June 17th for the members, and it was talking about NASDAQ 100 stocks above the 200-day moving average. And historically, I said, look where it's at right here. This thing is down like 4.7 or something at the time, I believe it was. You can see it right there. That was last month. And when you scroll back, you can see it was at its lowest point since the 08 crash. And it actually bottomed out, I believe, like 3.7 on the 08 crash, we were right there at it. I just didn't really realize at the time. And then you look at it now, and look, since that point, going right on up, right? So now we're up to about 20%. As of the day, they're, they're over their 200-day moving average. And so, you know, that's kind of surprising, which means it only has 100 stocks. So it means like 20 stocks or something. But, you know, that's something to take a look at. But then you look at you know, this right here, here's the other reason, you know, the NASDAQ 100 bottoms before the spine. Here's why it does it. What did I tell you last week, this right here, risk on, right? This trend line has been going way back. So now the QQQ is outperforming the SPY, which means tech's outperforming value. You can see it bounces many, many, many times. But if you go back, look what happens. Remember the dates when we bottomed right there. You can see uh, in November, all of a sudden, huge momentum swing, right? In 08. And you see what happened. All of a sudden, risk on, forget value, and it just takes off in those two months' time frame. See, that's when you can also look at it. That's why this ratio is a good thing to look at to see when the institutions are pivoting and moving out of value back into risk, right? There it is, October 7th, right? There it is. You see plain as day. We're coming down, value, 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 forget risk, and then boom, risk on. Here we go with tech. And that's what happens. And so that's another thing you can look at as well, the QQQ divided by the SPY. Now, why do I not think we've actually really bottomed in the market, all right, the overall market, uh, not just tech, but because of the volume, right? I went back and looked at volume. Usually volume precedes price movement, especially big price movements. And so, you know, when you look at what's going on now versus what's happening in the other bear markets, you can plainly see when we're in a bottoming process, volume picks back up. As you can see right here during the dot-com bubble, you know, you can see we're selling off, selling off. You see a ton of red bars right there. The volume is totally taking people out because a lot of people lost all their money right there. So they have no money to buy back in and they're just completely defeated. So we'll draw the line right there. That's about your average. You probably draw it a little lower, but you now right there. And then you look, here's the bottoming process to the right of that. It's starting to come in. What do you see with volume, especially the green bars? Now it's picking up, right? You can see plain as day that that average right there volume is higher. And we'll draw the line right across this so you can see it. As it starts to try to fight and do this bottoming process, and the bulls or bears, they're fighting back and forth, back and forth at these certain levels. As you can see, that bar is definitely higher than the one on the left right there. All right. And then, of course, before you start to see the push up, that's when you see a bunch of green bars take place. Okay. And so, 
that's something you can see right there. And then if we end up going over to 08, you can see this one's even more plain. This is the weekly, by the way, we're looking at. Look at this. Look at the volume that was put on this thing. I mean, this one's even easier than the other one. And you can see there's about your average. Again, the bar can probably be a little lower. Get capitulation for sure. And then look when it's trying to bottom out here. This is when you're trying to fight. The bulls and bears are going crazy. Some weeks are red, some weeks are green. But look at the volume pickup. It is massive right there. I mean, that is plain to see. All right. You can see what's happening right here. You could almost call that capitulation the way it is on the weekly with all those reds right there. But look at the volume. The volume now is just much less uh, than it was, right? I mean, matter of fact, it's actually trending downward on the weekly chart right here. And so you don't see that huge pickup yet. You could absolutely see it, there's no doubt. I mean, you can see this is breaking out uh, like a lot, of, a lot of others are, you know, recapturing their moving averages. And here's the QQQ, you know, back in the dot-com bubble, you can see where the average volume was right there. And then you can see as the bottoming process started, you can see it start to pick up right there. I mean, it's pretty plain to see to me when I look at that on the weekly chart. And not just that, but also the one that you're going to start seeing is a lot more green candles on the weekly, right? Weekly candles will start closing out. Again, they're still fighting the bulls and the bears, but that's what you're going to see. Now we fast forward to 08, you're going to see plain as day, the capitulation. That's definitely capitulation. See all those red bars right there? And then when you start to see the bulls and bears fight it out, you can see the average volume, if we drew a line right there, is actually more, and especially once we start to go green, turn that corner, look at all those green bars. That's that's weekly, right? So that's like six weeks in a row, I believe, when it started to finally move up. But you can clearly see capitulation, and you can see the turn right there. Huge pickup right there. And then if we look at the QQQ, uh, now, for example, as we're looking at it, you can see you could call that capitulation where all those weekly red candles are. Some people are calling it that. You could. It could be a very good argument for that. But I would say just look at the volume where it's at right now over the last four weeks, right? I mean, that right there, again, almost you could say is trending down. I think this week will obviously end up green or at least flat at most. You can see right there the QQ is trending up. It's filling gaps. It's capturing uh, moving averages again. Very bullish, right? But then, you know, you go down here and you look at this volume and it's like the opposite. Like it's like heading this way or something. And so on a downward slope. And so that's the argument to be made right there. And just to show you one more, PayPal is a very popular one I hear everybody talking about. And again, you can argue capitulation on this one as well, but look at that volume. Again, this is a weekly chart and you can see plain as day since what, May? It's just been sloping downward, you know, but the one good thing I would say, if you look at it, is you got almost three green weeks in a row, which is good. So you can see this move uh, rather quickly up. But again, that's downward sloping volume for sure. And so to me, that's not super bullish. It's not like a lot of people are coming in off the sidelines. Because remember, there's a lot of money on the sidelines. And the reason why I believe that is because a lot of people are waiting for this GDP reading, right? They want to see, are we already in recession? They want to see Apple report, all the big fang stocks are reporting next week. And so, you know, that's what a lot of people want to see. You got your FOMC meeting. What rate hike are they going to do? And so that's, I think, what you're going to see. So if you see GDP, so I'm saying the setup, if you see GDP come in positive, the FOMC does 0.75 instead of uh, one full percent. You see the FANG stocks, especially Apple, come in and surprise people because guess what? Remember I told you, bars on the ground. You saw Tesla. And so you will absolutely see a setup explode most likely. Now, does that mean we're not coming back down? Yeah, I can definitely see us coming back down because let's be real, the economy isn't that strong. Okay, AT&T, if you didn't see it, just literally lowered their cash flow by a billion dollars because they said people aren't able to pay their phone bill and they only increased the phone bill on average by six bucks, right? And so when I see something like that, I mean, I'm like, really? And I see car repossessions going through the roof. You know, your, your cell phone bill is really not that expensive. It's one of the cheapest bills you probably have, and people aren't able to pay that. And at and is one of the biggest cell phone providers out there telling you they're going to lower their cash flow by a billion dollars because of the amount of collections they see coming up over the next six months or so. Yeah, that's not a good sign, okay? But understand, this video, all I'm trying to show you is very simply, and you, that's why I say you can carry this forward and use it in the future because you're going to have plenty of bear markets in your lifetime, especially your kids, that the NASDAQ 100... Plain as day, tell me it doesn't. Same as the bottom first. Why? Because it's beaten over the head like a redheaded stepchild as soon as we go into a bear market. 
As soon as things turn south, tech is like it's got it's got a leper or something, right? And they just beat it down into oblivion. That's what they did with all these stocks. And so that's why it recovers first. That's pretty much the simple way, right? And then you can see, I'm telling you, put that QQQ slash spy on your chart so you can see when value swings into risk. All right, look at crypto. Crypto is just roaring right now. I mean, nobody expect that to be happening right now. And it is, right? A lot of people are risk. A lot of FOMOing is happening right now, I think. But we'll see. And again, if, if next week turns out great or even just average, it's just okay. You could see a huge rally. Does that mean it's the final rally? Absolutely not. You've seen these charts, right? And we still have, trust me, inflation may peak, but buddy, it's going to be here for a long time eating people's finances up. I can tell you that right now. People are going to be running credit cards up like crazy if they aren't already. And so, you know, that's going to be with us for a long time. The Europe, man, I mean, their central bank actually raised uh, twice as much as they thought they were going to raise. But, you know, their energy crisis affects all these big mega cap stocks. Because remember, Apple over 50% comes from overseas. China is actually putting money into their economy. Why? Because it's slowing. That's why. Like, we know there's a global slowing happening here. And that affects these big mega cap stocks, which hold up the indexes. But the what's happening right now is a lot of these fund managers are hiding. They're rotating out of oil and they're rotating into those big uh, mega cap stocks and hiding out because they just don't fluctuate as much as smaller caps. Okay. And so, you know, that's where we're at. Hopefully you got some out of that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I always value your opinions. You know, again, you know, I like pushback too. Say, nah, I think maybe, but I don't think so. And this is why I like, give an explanation. I love to see it. You know, cause I like to learn from you guys. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hit the like and subscribe button. If you did, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later.